Hello and welcome to video number two in my series of videos which are a response to an open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson regarding the flat earth by D. Murphy 25. I'm only going to deal with his first question in this video which is related to equatorial bulge. So it's only really about the rotation of the earth, not the shape of the earth really. Question one, why is there land at the equator? So you said that the Earth, Earth throughout, throughout its life, life, even when it formed, it was spinning, and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere, it's an it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate. It's an oblate spheroid, and the bulges are at the equator. So which is easier to move, rock or water? If the gravity is strong enough to prevent the water from being flung off into space, then it's strong enough to hold the much denser rock in place. So only the water should be bulging. So if the bulk of the Earth's water is at the equator, why is there land at the equator? And please don't say it's because of the height of the land. Most of Africa is flat plain, sometimes under sea level. In fact, the Danakil Desert in northeast Ethiopia is said to be the lowest place on Earth, and incidentally, one of the flattest places on Earth too. Um, I suppose I should try and at least treat this like it's a serious question, although it's not, it's just nothing. Uh, so, What's his argument? What's he getting at here? He's, I think he's trying to imply that the standard model of the world's rotating doesn't work because if it was, the sea would be swelling at the equator more than the land. And his main argument for this is that water is easier to move than rock. So he's suggesting that the world would end up looking something like this. Um, which... I don't know if he, if he appreciates how exaggerated this diagram is, but the equatorial bulge is not even noticeable on the whole scale of the whole Earth. It's tiny. Um, so his argument is that rock's hard, therefore it wouldn't be affected by the equatorial bulge. I think that's what he's saying. Okay, the first point to make is that the Earth was once molten. And that it was also one spinning faster than it is now, so the equatorial bulge was larger in the past. So the equatorial bulge has actually shrunk over time. So I could just as easily make an argument using his logic the other way and say, well, the equatorial bulge was formed when the earth was molten, then it cooled and formed the outer crust of the earth. And then as the Earth has slowed, the equatorial bulge should get less. But because our rock can't be moved, then the shape of the Earth would be fixed so that there would be less water at the equator. I mean, I could make that argument. I wouldn't because it's complete nonsense. Because rock is malleable and quite fluid on geological timescales. The crust of the Earth and, um, and the surface of the Earth is very dynamic, very changeable. I mean, just learn some geology. Learn about mountain ranges rising and falling, continental drift, sea floor, spre uh, sea floor spreading. Uh, the Earth is a very dynamic, changing system. And rock, like I said, is quite malleable over long periods of time. I mean, you can see places on Earth where you see sedimentary um, rock layers have been um, deformed into all kinds of shapes like this, folded up like this, or like this. I mean, sedimentary rock layers are formed horizontally. So these have been folded over time into all kinds of different shapes. And like I said, mountain ranges rise and fall over time. 
Rock is very malleable on geological timescales. So even if his main argument stood up that the rock, that the outer crust of the earth would be too solid to be affected by equatorial bulge, it wouldn't work anyway because the earth was once spinning faster so the equatorial bulge in the past was bigger. And it doesn't work anyway because rock is very malleable on long time scales. So this is just, this is just ignorant nonsense.